Won't you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. God loves life and desires it for all of creation. I wonder if it's difficult to remember this reality during this strange time. How many of us have found that we lie awake these days at 3 o'clock in the morning? I don't know about you, but 3 o'clock in the morning has always been the time in the dark of the night when I lie awake thinking, ruminating over all of my shortcomings, my inadequacies, my failures, fretting over the long list of things I've left unfinished or things that I have yet to do. That's the tower when I replay all of the disappointments and regrets that I have, when I list all the scenarios that have provoked anxiety or rehearsed conversations that are yet to be had. In that state of fret and regret at three o'clock in the morning, I think that we say, as we heard in the book of Ezekiel this morning, that our bones are dried up and our hope is lost and we are cut off completely. Most of the time at three o'clock in the morning, life seems really impossible. And whether or not it is actually three o'clock in the morning, whenever we find ourselves consumed with worry and lament and sorrow, like the psalmist, our souls long for the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. At three o'clock in the morning, it's hard for us to remember that daybreak will come and that God loves life and desires life for all of creation. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I know that in this past week, I've had a few moments when it felt like 3 o'clock in the morning, even though it was only 9 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I've had moments where I felt overwhelmed by anxiety and frustration and sadness and helplessness. Moments when it was way too easy to get wound around the reel worrying about what could happen or what might happen or what will happen. In those moments, hope seemed very far away. And I'm pretty sure I'm not alone, but there's hope. There's a picture floating around Facebook. It's a picture of a church sign that has a, it's a cute little sign. It reads, had not planned on giving, quite, giving up quite this much for Lent. Isn't that the truth? Not only have we been forced to fast in ways that we never could have possibly imagined and scale back everything that we know and love during this particular Lenten season, we've also had to change the way that we seek God in each other and in the world. All of the familiar things, our church services, our book studies, our Lenten soup suppers, our grand plans for intensified prayer practices, everything is different now as we adjust to this new reality. At least for now, things are very different than they were. And yet, there is still good news. Even though it's still Lent, I know it is. We are Easter people. We are people of the resurrection. We still are resurrection people. And we believe, we know that God is love and God is new life. In 2018, Joan Chittister wrote in her newsletter, and I quote, God is in the newness of life. Newness is where God waits for us to teach us new things. It is, however, the old, the familiar, the routine, the commonplace that we prefer. So we cling. We like to get things right. We like to be in control of our lives. We like surety and stability and predictability. We don't want change. And she continues, but, but, to be invited to begin again, to be ready to start over in life, that is what the practice of Lent is all about. Then, she says, we are free to rethink everything we've done in life and everything we want in life 
and everything we've demanded from life and get down to the basics, the presence of God and trust in the God of surprises. Now, Joan's words were written two years ago. Yeah, how relevant are they today? Yes, today is still the fifth Sunday of Lent. We are not gathered in our churches. We are not sitting in our favorite pew. We cannot sit next to our friends at coffee hour. We are not listening to live music. Our senses, in this moment in history, our senses are deprived of all of the usual smells and sounds and tastes and sights and touch that bring us such a wonderful, familiar feeling of closeness to God. And yet, though our reality is different, we are still each in the presence of God, the God of love, the God of life, the God of newness is still all around us and within us. And though we are not able to gather together physically, though we are not able to eat and drink the bread and the wine, even though we can't do those familiar, wonderful things, Jesus is still with us. Whenever we approach Jesus in faith, Jesus is still with us. He is just as present today with us as he was at the tomb of Lazarus. The glory of God prevails. The glory of God prevails with every act of kindness, every plea for mercy, with every act of healing, every testimony to new life. The glory of God prevails in each new prayer, in every smile, in every act of generosity, the glory of God prevails. In every handmade face mask, in every card or letter that we send or receive, in every phone call to check in on someone who lives alone, the glory of God prevails. The glory of God prevails in every choice we make to stay at home to do our part to prevent the further spread of this disease. The glory of God prevails. In the self-sacrificial work offered by every first responder, every nurse, every nurse's aide, doctor, physician's assistant, nurse practitioner, respiratory therapist, x-ray technician, or any other healthcare of any kind, lab technicians, in that self-sacrificial work of all of the health care providers and chaplains, the glory of God continues to prevail in new ways. Giving all of us, inviting all of us to bear witness along with Mary and Martha outside the tomb that God truly loves life and desires it for all of creation. And that is what the practice of Lent is all about. Returning to Joan Chittister's newsletter from two years ago, for just a moment, she said, If Lent is to be real at all, we must recognize that we are on a journey, a journey that twists and turns between what we were before and what we are beginning now. There is no settling down. There is only the call of the new beginning where God dwells in our heart and takes all of our fear and all of our loneliness away. What a beautiful and relevant sentiment in the midst of this crisis. Lent is a journey that twists and turns between what we were before and what we are beginning now. And there is only the call of the new beginning where God dwells in the heart and takes all our fear, all our loneliness away. This brought tears to my eyes and hope to my heart. My friends, Jesus is still with us. I'd like to close this out this morning with a prayer. 
Please pray with me. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of new life and love that you so graciously bestow upon us. May our hearts remain fixed, despite the swift and varied changes of this world. May our hearts remain fixed where true joys are to be found, in you. And may you give us grace to navigate the twists and turns of this strange journey and help us to stay focused on the call of new beginning where you dwell deep within our hearts. And take all of our fear and our loneliness away. Amen.